to be at the airport in 15 minutes. summer here when I was a kid. You know, I've never met a Laird. What do I call your uncle? Laird McMillan? I'm sure I want you to call him Uncle Mike. Listen, we've been driving around this lake for an hour. Lock. All right, lock. Small but rugged. Half mile across, hundred around, they say. What are they looking for? Hmm. Lockmoran monster. Monster? Mm-hmm. He's seen mostly in the gloaming. That means twilight. By people who spend an hour or two in the pub. Uh, oh, that, yeah, that means, means bar. Mm -hmm. That's right, uh -huh. Well, I wouldn't mind drinking for a good cause. Wonder if the scotch is any good here. It's a watchtower. Uncle Michael's probably up there right now, doing his accounts. Uncle Michael! Uncle Michael! His nephew. He's expecting your rifle. Is there a key? Is there a key? It's bolted inside. I remember a window. An arch is slit only four inches wide. And 60 feet up. We'd best break down the door. Excuse me, sir. asked me to meet him here. Oh. I must listen to his attorney. 3.15, he said. Why? Now, why would he make an appointment? If he why? was planning to do Why? I share your sorrow. Desmond! Desmond! We just heard about you. Uh, Mr. McMillan, this oh, is Jimmy. Jimmy. Oh, Mac! 
Sorry. It's been a long time. It certainly has. Uh, this is my fiance, Nell Barry. Hello. Is it true? Did he kill himself? He was found alone with a gun in the tower room. The bullet matches the gun. And the powder burns are what they seem with. In any case, you'll be free, Mill Jamie, to sell the castle. If he sells. Oh, he'll sell, lassie. Your fiancé looks like a Macmillan. And the law makes him the new layer. But he has not a Scotsman's taste for the hard work. Desmond, that was quite uncalled for. He's right, though, you know, Nell. If I were English, I would be known as a wealthy eccentric. But uh, we Scots, we don't have wealthy eccentrics. We just have ne'er-do-wells. What do you do now, Jamie? Well, at the moment, uh, Nell and I are on the committee for the Heelan Games. In fact, uh, we are the committee. Ooh, there's a job for you now. Three light days of duty every other year. Between times, he sells souvenir programs at Coronation. <laughs> you, know, you do have the light touch there, Desmond. Well, uh, you seem to have things well in hand, and uh, we have business. The games will go on, of course. Of course. Grandfather would have wanted it that way. Jamie. Do you think your grandfather would be the sort of man who would kill himself? Well, he, he wasn't the sort. No, he wasn't. But what about all the evidence? What about the evidence? It, he wasn't the sort. I'd like to think that he didn't. That was a great disappointment to him. But I really loved that old man. Mayor? Hmm? Do you think the shot could have come from there? It's the crofter's cottage too far away. Direct line of vision. Couldn't be the lawn. We'd have seen it from the driveway. The gully, it's an impossible angle. Well, according to Mr. Ramsey, the McCready ghost is our prime suspect. McCready ghost? Glad Mr. Ramsey isn't staying for dinner. I'd sure hate to hear that dull story again. <laughs> he is staying for dinner. Well, he said it was a great story. Of course, he did say it was better on a dark and stormy night. Well, maybe we'll get lucky. <laughs> Mr. Ramsey's going to tell us some castle ghost stories. A monster in the lake and a ghost in the castle, some vacation. In the war against the second, uh, the English, Castle Ken Ross was the headquarters for two clans, the Macmillan and the McCready. The laird of the castle was the great Ian Macmillan, and four of its five lieutenants were Macmillans. The fifth one being Fergus McCready, referred to by some as Fergus, the infamous. <laughs> oh, no need for alarm, only a lying down. The authorities will restore power presently. What is presently? Somewhere between two minutes and a week. Oh, it sounds like home. <laughs> On the eve of the Battle of Kinross, he and his chieftains galloped over to the castle in order to hide the Macmillan treasure. Having done so, they were returning to the battlefield when suddenly Ian noticed that he had but four companions. Fergus. Aye, indeed. Returning to the castle, they found Fergus hidden in an alcove within the castle walls. If it's walls you love more than honor, raged Ian, then it's walls ye shall have. And he and his men began to seal Fergus up into the alcove. As the last heavy stone was in place, Fergus rose up and hurled forth his terrible curse. I shall not die. Macmillan walls will not outlast MacReady vengeance. And when I break free, woe to the Macmillan laird, whoever he be then, for his life shall be forfeit. And so shall the lives of all his kinsfolk, even to their wives and servants. Ian 
and his chieftains were killed by the Sassanac, and the castle was ransacked. And a feud began between the two clans that has lasted for several centuries. Legends die hard in the healing. Ah, we see. If I might have a wee drop more of the port. Oh, Mrs. McTaggart, would you be so kind as to fetch my coat? As for myself, I neither believe in ghosts nor blood feuds, or I'd never have been attorney to the McMillan Laird. You're a MacReady? Aye. Full-blooded. My grandfather died at 90, and it was as proud as boast that he'd ever spoken to a Macmillan. Of course, that's pure healing superstition. But still, in my grandfather's honor, and to a spirit free at last, up the McCready! <laughs> Magnificent dinner. I thank you kindly. Good night, Macmillan. blood, but look, there's a nick on Bobby's ear. Mac, do you think there was somebody in the room? Do you think he was trying to defend his master, and when he did, he... Do you think there's a connection? Not quite. A man with a knife kills my uncle, nicks the dog's ear, then cuts himself into four-inch strips and throws himself out through an archer's slit that wide. Go back to the ghost in the wall or the monster in the lake. Or better yet, come to bed. Oh, I couldn't sleep with all this going on. Try it. Scraping like somebody clawing, but from inside the wall. You heard a ghost story as a part of suggestion. You heard a ghost story. I heard scraping. All right, all right. We'll find the noise or the bar. I'll settle. You want to go too? What do you think? Now, I'm partial deaf, you know, but not so deaf as to sleep through this sort of larking about. Oh, out the window. What's that? What are you running? Joke. A joke? joke? Yeah, well, suddenly it doesn't seem very funny. 
You see, I never really planned to go to Acapulco. I was always planning to come here and stay with you. Well, why didn't you? Well, I thought it'd be very funny if I took a later plane. And that way, you'd be so surprised to see me that you'd be glad to see me. Well, we're always glad to see you, Sergeant. Thank you, Mrs. McMillan. We asked you to come along with us in the first place. Thank you, too, sir. It's just wonderful being here. How did you get here? I didn't hear a car. Well, I rented one at the airport. Well, I was driving on the wrong side, and someone ran me up a ditch off the road. Well, you're here safely now. I bet you're hungry. The kitchen is closed. Yeah, but the bar's still open. Mildred. I suppose you'll be wanting a room. You can have your choice, with or without a ghost. The breakfast is at 8 o'clock. Oh, well. <laughs> Glad you're here, Charlie. It was a great surprise. We'll send a sandwich to you. My car is really in a ditch. I can't wait. the morning to you. And the rest of the day. Morning, Sergeant. What's that? Porridge. Oatmeal. Yeah. It's traditional, according to Mrs. McTuggart. Fried eggs and bacon all round. Mm -hmm. Three pairs straight up, strips on the side. I mean, who can eat this stuff, right? I beg your pardon. Uh, never mind, I'll take care of it. I thought this was an English-speaking country. <laughs> we do have a language barrier, though. Hmm? Bobby, he saw it all, and I'm sure he would tell us if he could. Now, come on, Bobby, you were in the room. Who did it? Who did it? Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. You'll be visitors. I'm uh, Duncan, the gamekeeper, as my father was 40 years before me. At least it was until I... You gave my notice last week. I'm Stuart McMillan. Aye. You're the nephew then. That's right. Aye. You're blood kin. You have a right to the fish in the streams and the birds of the gorse. This is Mrs. McMillan. How do you do? Charles Enright. Well, I just stopped by with some fish for the laird. The laird's dead. Dead? Shot himself, according to the local police. Well, why would he? Oh, it was all sure, but sown the wind in him. Indeed he was. I know it hurt the old man to think his castle couldn't even afford a gamekeeper. But why would he do it? He believed in life. A gamekeeper knows. You see, uh, the uh, games consist of the traditional field events, plus a couple of Scottish goodies like uh, tossing the caber. And sword dancing and the Highland fling. Oh. And, and the, the piping contest. Don't forget the piping contest now. It sounds like a big job. <laughs> oh, it Where is. Start? Oh, it's day after tomorrow, and it's very big. I tell you, Nell, Nell and I, we were up until midnight trying to get the thing straightened out. Hey, Thomas, tell me. Did you get caught in the rainstorm? Oh, no, no, no. Nell did. We were working at my place. Thomas, is that platform all right? I'll need more than a platform to win, so seeing that Duncan's entered. Duncan? The ex-gamekeeper? I... Oh, Duncan's a fine piper. He's won the past five contests in a row. Tell me, why'd you call him the ex-gamekeeper? Well, he quit a few days ago. I thought you knew. Well, no, nobody told me that. Oh. You know, the stakes aren't holding very well. <laughs> Did it rain last night? What? Well, of course it rained last night. Don't you I remember? I went to bed very early. Are you coming to the games, Mac? You couldn't keep me away. Us. You couldn't keep us away. Hey, Gav, uh, can you show us now? Oh, Alfie! Oh, no, no, that's quite all right, really. That's, I, I can show you. Oh, uh, Mr. Um... Uh, Fallensby. Oh, no, Fallensby. Hello. <laughs> Jim's haberdasher, Chipping Captain. Ah. Oh, uh, this is the Mrs. Flo. Well, how do you do? I don't suppose you've seen it. It? Yeah, the monster. Right. Oh, oh, oh. Not yet. Uh, it's the best time to see it now. See, it's in the gloaming down by the big rock. I can show you where it is now, if you'd like. Ah, would you? Well, of course I would. See you later. Ah. Press oh. on, troop. <laughs> well, you've seen it all now. The Highland Games every two years. And an occasional tourist trying to get a glimpse of the monster. That's about all that keeps this place alive. Are you coming, then? Uh-huh. Well, goodbye, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mrs. McMillan? Bye. See you. English girls have such a lovely complexion. Peaches and cream. Mm -hmm. Charming girl. So gentle. And such a liar. Huh? Well, their stories didn't exactly match on what they were doing last night. Oh, Sally, they're engaged. How quickly one forgets. You're right. We didn't always tell the truth when we were engaged. Mm -hmm. But we always told the same story. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Crocky's car? Right. Right. for the shooting season. Round and back. Let's go this way. Nine o'clock. Edge of the block. Hello. Howdy, friends. I'm Houston Gorman. I'm the tenant here. And this is Annie Gray, my pretty landlord. Oh, Hello. landlady. <laughs> Say hey to the folks, Annie. It's nice to see you again, Annie. Good to see you, Matt. I'm Stuart McMillan. Uh, Commissioner, is... San Francisco police. Proud to make your acquaintance, sir. How do you do? And this is and my this wife. must be your beautiful wife. Uh, Sally, isn't it? Well, Sally, you welcome to Crofter's Cottage. Thank you. Come on over, you folks. You said a spell. Thank you. Of course, we knew you were in town. I tell you, when you've been away from the good old U.S. of A. long as I have, why, you know it when folks from God's country land here. Uh, no offense, Annie. I tell you, sometimes I get so hungry for the sound of an American voice. Mm -mm. You got us, Commissioner. We are litter bugs. <laughs> <laughs> Annie and I sit down here a lot watching that castle yonder. You know, I try to buy it from your uncle. Hey. A shame about him. Fine gentleman. Uncle Michael wouldn't sell. Looks like he could reach right out and touch them stones, don't it? Those are mighty powerful binoculars. No, no. He wouldn't sell, but his grandson will. Jamie. Are you sure? Jamie's got expensive tastes. And an expensive, uh... Fiancé? You could call it that. Well, you know what these London girls are like. <laughs> Of course, we'll offer them a fair price. So I represent Globe Hotels, Inc. They want to run tours here. Seven glorious days and six terrific nights in a Scotch castle. Scottish. And you're determined to buy it for uh, Globe Hotels, Inc.? You just double bet I am. Oh, Commissioner. Are you asking, did I shoot him just because he wouldn't sell and Jamie will? But let me ask you something. Well, you're an expert on rifles, huh? I'm the best there is. Would it be possible that the shot that killed my uncle could be fired from here? No way. It is not only 2,000 yards across the valley with the updrafts and crosswinds, but it's got to go through a four-inch slit without hitting a wall. Another problem I'd have is, how do I get the fellow to stand right still just inside the slit while I get the shot lined up? That's a tough shot. An impossible shot. Well, somebody solved the problem. Uh, no offense. None taken. He was your uncle. Well, um, hey, uh, Commissioner, how about joining us for a little grouse hunting tomorrow? Oh, I... Hey, you know what a grouse is, don't you, Ms. McMillan? That's a pigeon with a live wire ad agency. <laughs> 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 I tell you, Duncan's coming and Ramsey. Oh, well, I'll try to make it. Matt, grouse hunting, that's killing little birds. Well, that's the idea. Is that a deal? That's a deal. Oh. See you. So long, Annie. Nice to see you again, Matt. I think Uncle Michael would like me to go on this hunt. Sorry, 
to disturb you, sir, but Mrs. McTaggart heard some noises downstairs. Sounds like digging to me. Digging? Digging? What's this down here, sir? This is the oldest part of the castle, as I remember it. They used to call it the keep. The keep? Uh-huh. Oh, how lovely. Where they keep people. Sure you want to come down here? If you're down here, you sure you can find me up there. It's locked. Or stuck. We'll never know. Upstairs. There's someone upstairs. Not anymore. It's an outside door. Sir, he got away. I just can't seem to run on turf. I'm better on asphalt. The guy was really moving. Mm -hmm. It's faster than last night. I wonder why. Boots blue. Oh, hold on, I got that painting the judges stand. Uh, maybe we should separate. Beat uh, doing this hill and across the valley. I need a left flank. Uh, see you later, Mac. What we have got to do, Mrs. McMillan, is be logical. Logical. An old man climbs up here once a week to do the bookkeeping for a castle that can't even afford a gamekeeper. He puts a trivet under his teapot to protect the top of the desk. But the top of the desk is marble. It is not affected by heat. Life is not logical. Maybe not, but I have a theory. Hmm. Now, according to my theory, the killer was trapped inside the castle last night. Really? Mm-hmm. Witness. The body was here. The rifle here. Mm -hmm. That door was locked, the window too small to get out of. Right. Ballistics has proven that the rifle was the murder weapon, and the powder burns tell us that it was fired at a very close range. Suicide, right? Right. Because if it was murder, the murderer would have been trapped right inside this room. Unless... Unless he disappeared through the walls. <laughs> That's my theory. You're kidding. No, I'm serious. I'm talking about a secret passageway. You're kidding. Now, you might have noticed the last time I was in here that I scraped mortar off various parts of the wall. I was wondering what that was all about. Well, this morning, I went into the village, and I talked the custodian into letting me into the school. And? And they have a science lab there with some carbon dating equipment. It's pretty primitive, and physics really isn't my field, but I made some tests. And? <clears throat> the mortar in this section of the wall is 500 years old. Over here, 300 years old. But within the 300 year old area, the mortar is much more modern. How much more modern? Well, I can't really be sure. Maybe five years, maybe only a couple of days. What are we waiting for? Right.
happened, Max? Sounded like a firefight. Are you all right, sir? I'm in great shape for a man who's been shot at with a rifle. Rifle? In a gloves area? Are you sure? I know the sound of a rifle when I hear one, right? Yeah, that was a rifle. Any deer on this parade? Enough to attract more than a few hunters. Some of them are very careless. Careless enough to fire four shots at me? You're lucky you're not on your way to be stuffed and mounted. <laughs> See what's back there. Let me stay here. Fat champ. It's like being inside of a well. It's like a room, sort of. It's the only way that a man can get out of here. Fergus McCready, and we weren't even looking for him. Now, it's my theory that the murderer came to this room sometime before your uncle. He opened this secret door, went into the chamber, closed the door behind him, and waited. At last, your uncle came up the stairs. He comes into the room, closes this door, <laughs> and locks him, locking himself into the room. Then the murderer opened the secret door, crept out of the passage, and killed your uncle. Bang! I kill him. I hear the voices into the wall. That could work. It's possible. Charlie. Yeah? Would you mortar up the wall now, please, from the inside? I guess you'd have to have long, thin fingers, wouldn't it? Never mind, Charlie. Good try. Well, my theory was good in the abstract. Just wasn't any good in the concrete. <laughs> Well, you know what my father always said? First, find your motive. Then you've got your murder. Everybody's got a motive. Jamie's the heir. Now's got Jamie. Ramsey's a McCready, don't forget that. Houston wants to buy this place, and Annie Graves got Houston. And Duncan quit, because no one knows why. Anyone else? Mrs. McTaggart. Well, I think she had a crush on the old man. Unrequited love. Oh, I get half for the day. Let's call it quits. Yeah, let's take a ride around the lot. Good idea. get dark in this country. It's the gloaming. Well, I think it's just about the most romantic part of the day. We like a lot of light. You didn't used to mind it before we got married. <laughs> you think of that time in Candlestick Park? No, I was thinking of that time in Emeryville in the drive-in movie at three in the afternoon. And you told me they had a show in the afternoon. They did. But the man who came around to check us out <laughs> just... <laughs> Matt, huh? look! Is that a monster? 
monster? Is that a real monster? Oh, yes. It's gone. Oh, look, tea and scones. Oh, not for me, thanks. But it was something with enough power to move through the water, well, like a monster. Could it have been towed by a boat? No, there was nothing above the surface except those... except those fins, and it was absolutely silent. Sergeant, it was so quiet you could hear that little carousel over at the game's grounds. Oh, you know what they call that, sir? That is called a side skirt. But the one you found didn't have one. Wonder why. You know, I've seen something like this somewhere. Not as part of the armor, but separate, used for something. If your Aunt Eleanor gave you one for Christmas... She wouldn't, darling. She's into modern. Well, if she did, what would you do with it? Mm. Well, I'd give it to Aunt Louise. Her birthday's in January. She loves useless things. Fergus armor missing. That is strange. Mm. Perhaps it was stolen. Did you not say there was a break in recently? Within the past five years, according to Enright. And I... But why steal just part of the army? Mac. And here he is to play the tune that caught the judge's ears. Up with the bonnets of Bunny Dundee. By this year's winner, Thomas Sinclair of Glenarvan. Sinclair? But I thought Duncan was Duncan. It was a certainty. Didn't make the finals. Short of breath he was. Duncan! Hi, Matt. You're still taking the high road. In Scotland. Let's take a walk. Good idea. Oh, and right. Uh, uh, excuse me, Commissioner, but there's a fly casting competition over there. I don't want to miss it. Oh, I hope you catch a nice fish. <laughs> Bye, Sergeant. Stand you painted yesterday? Oh, yes, yes. I did huh? a good job, too, I think. No, huh? no, no. There's blue paint on your food. Blue. It stands green. Oh, well, I must have got that someplace else. Hey, McDougal! Mac Mel says they're selling some terrific tweeds. You want to go over and look at them? Huh? You want to go over and look at them? Um. Ooh, horses on that carousel. I'm just a nut for carousels. I'll see you later. He'll do anything to get out of shopping. Come on. It'll never replace the roller there.
Watch out. Yeah. Country, we try to keep to the left. Ah, very good, Miss McTavish. You're really getting the hang of it. Tell me more. Boy, was I lucky. You're saving me from that caber tossing. Look at Enright. You're not the only one. <laughs> Hey, what's the matter with you, Bobby? You gone daft? Bobby. Why, thank you, Bobby. I can use all the compliments I can get. Come on, Mac, hurry up. I'm dying for a peek. You should learn the value of anticipation, lass. There's a wee drop in Doris. Just a wee drop, that's all. There's a wee drop in Doris. She's for the gang of all. There's a wee whitey waiting in a wee button bend. Hello, is my husband in there? There's a wee doctor Doris for we gang of war. There's a wee whitey waiting in a wee button bend. If you can say it's a fabric moonless neck, you're all right, you can. <laughs> you look fabulous. Turn around, I want to see if you demonstrate. This is one drafty castle, you know that? Would you like to borrow some pantyhose? Would you like the back of me hand? You look great. It's my sporin. Right, it's supposed to be hanging in the center. Oh, the little purse. Yeah. Yeah. You can put a little lipstick in there. For me. You know, I think Bobby prefers me as a Scotsman. I'll keep your knees together, darling. Mm. I know what Bobby doesn't like. Did you see the way he was barking at Ramsey? And I've seen him barking like crazy at Duncan the gamekeeper. Oh, Sally, stop waiting for Bobby to solve my uncle's murder. Dogs bark. They also wag their tails. I've seen him do both at Duncan and at Ramsey, among others. You decent? Come on in, Mildred. Call that decent? Go put some pants on. I've been through that already, Mildred. What's up? What time is a shindig? In an hour, and it's not a shindig. It's the traditional turning over of the castle to the new laird, Jamie. Mm -hmm. Well, the great hall is filling with Scotsmen, and Mrs. McTaggart is already passing out the booze. Then what are you doing up here? <laughs> Aren't you amusing? Ta -ta 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 -ta. <laughs> Mrs. McTee has never heard of drink coasters. By the time Jamie moves in, there are going to be rings all over that good furniture. Oh, all that good mahogany. Mm -hmm. Those old-time lairds should have put their armor on their tabletops instead of on their warriors. You'll work it out, Mildred. Yeah, well, don't say I didn't warn you. Sally. Mm hmm Would you find Enright and... Meet me up in the tower. Darling, what about the ceremony? Oh, this time. Mac? Huh? There is something that I've always wanted to know. What? What does a Scotsman wear under his kill? Later. <laughs> Sold a crime. A crime that happened 300 years ago. Fergus McCready. And you put me on to it, Sally. Of course I did. I did. Mm hmm. Let's go back 300 years. Remember the legend. B. McMillan walled up Fergus McCready because he'd found him hiding in the castle the night before a battle. Figured him out to be a coward. But he was really a thief. Fergus came back to the castle, dug up the treasure, reburied it someplace else. The secret died in the wall with him. That's why the treasure disappeared. I put you on to all of that. Sure. Remember the other day when you wondered why anybody would need a trivet to protect a marble tabletop? You weren't even there. Oh, well, I showed it to him. I know, you said it wasn't logical, but it seemed logical to me, so I... The missing piece from Fergus's armor. 
Well, how did that get in here? Uncle Michael. Sometime in the last years, remember the new mortar, Uncle Michael found Fergus, understood what this meant, used it as a trivet so he could keep it around. But why? Fergus scratched the location of the treasure on it. Well, why wouldn't Uncle Michael just dig up the treasure? Well, Jamie, I would think. You can't get rid of a castle in a day, but you certainly can a treasure. And Jamie, being the spendthrift that he was, Uncle Michael wanted to wait and make sure that Jamie was mature enough. Mac, this doesn't look like the map to a treasure. It says B. Q three. That doesn't make any sense. Doesn't it? Mm-mm. Follow me. When we were down here before, it occurred to me that this floor looks like a chessboard. Chess? I still don't get it. Well, Sergeant, each chess square has a name, so you can write the game down. For example, BQ3 would be Black's Queen's third. The only problem is there are more squares down here than there are on a chessboard. And furthermore, I can't tell which wall's black. Now, our digger has already done some testing. I bet we can catch him here red-handed tonight. Suppose he doesn't dig tonight. And that's his last chance. Jamie moves in tomorrow. Besides, he already learned that he can be heard upstairs. Tonight, there'll be a dance band and pipers. Fire a cannon down here and never be heard upstairs. So, Enright, you and I will have to wait for him. Mac, you can. Why not? You're a big part of the ceremony tonight. I can handle the surveillance, sir. Well, it's dark down here. I have the advantage of surprise. Besides, it's too damp down here for skirts. All right, Jim. But be careful. Remember, one of those people upstairs is a murderer. Good night, Sergeant. very well. Uh, thank you. Oh, he just puts it on and lets it sell itself. Now. Want to dance? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I should warn you about the castle tradition. Never first dance under this roof between a husband and wife. Uh, far be it for me to go against the castle tradition. Excuse me. She just made that up. <laughs> Would you care for a fling? Hey, pardon? Would you care for a fling? Oh, you don't fling to this music, only the pipes. But I'd be honored to lead you in a foxtrot. George Macduff. Sally McMillan. Lead on, Macduff. You know what they say about he who cries enough. You've heard that before. Uh, many times. Many, many times. <laughs> Oh, I see 
nil are stuck with some big clock. Isn't he your husband? So, you're right. I never recognize him when he's dancing with someone else. Thank you very much, Mrs. McNeil. Oh, you're very welcome. May I fetch you something to wet your whistle? Oh, that'd be nice. And I'll be right back. Meet me by the black wall. Mrs. McTaggart. Mrs. McTaggart, is there a black wall anywhere about? They all look sort of beige to me. The black wall, you said. That's not color. It's from chess. The North Wall. Well, what makes the North Wall black? The Macmillan who built this place was a hound for chess. Wouldn't he play with the morning sun in his eyes? And always played white. So the south wall of every room is known as the white wall. Does that mean that the north wall of the keep would... Wrong, missus. Too many squares for chess in that chamber. It's across from the keep. That's the old chess room. Thank you, Mrs. Victor. You've been very helpful. Maybe later, Mrs. McTaggart. Thank you. Sergeant Enright. Charlie? Ch Charlie, it's, it's me, Mrs. McMillan. It's okay, it's me. You're looking in the wrong room. It's across the hall. room across the hall, and the north wall is the black wall! Thanks to the missus, I know nowhere to dig. Sorry, Sergeant. I'll take that. Come on. It's rightfully mine. Hey. McCready died for it. I wrote the clue to find it. Hey. I'm a McCready. I thank you to turn round, Sergeant. The scepter of the Macmillan, strong and straight. All here bear witness that you accept it willingly, with all encumbrances there too. The last man who carried it, carried it with great honor. I wish it and the family name same good fortune in your hands. Those present are bound to inform all those in their ken in these mountains that Jamie McMillan is the true and only possessor of all properties, honors, titles, and licenses pertaining to the laird of Kinross. And henceforth, he shall be known as the McMillan. Up the McMillan.
crabs, you don't. I get that same funny chill like when they quit Miss America. It's a great show for the hotel. Uh, excuse me, uh, do you see my wife? No. You can let me go now. You don't need a hostage. They can't catch you now. You didn't quit your job. You got fired when Uncle Michael found you digging for the treasure, right? Got a smart glass. Now be quiet. Have some hard driving to do. Any idea where he was heading? Well, sir, when I came to, I looked out the window and I saw a car going down the lock road very fast. There's a chance. We could cross it a lot faster than Duncan could go around. Come on. Oh, there aren't any boats. How'd you know it was Duncan? He lost the piping contest. Why did he lose? Because he was out of breath. Oh, we couldn't resist the chance to dig while the castle was empty. Race back to the games, met his accomplice. Accomplice? Jamie. What? Jamie. What is it? Excuse me. You're gonna run it for it? me. The Lockmore and Monster. Oh, come on now. You don't really believe there is such a... Rope burns on your hands, blue paint on your shoes from the carousel, mud from near the lock. And I heard the music when I saw the monster. I don't know anything about I that. haven't got time to argue with you. You're gonna run the monster now. The village needs a monster in order to survive. What about my wife's survive? Come on. I can cut across the lake a lot faster than they can find You, you could have killed me. I can make that keeper sit up and play any lorry. I was only throwing you scared. And it was you that shot at Mac when he was on the grouse hunt. Quiet. All we've done is scare folks so far. Very fast to come. There's none from the castle can catch us now. Oh! Water is like ice! Give Jamie the signal. If you fall off of this thing, you'll freeze or drown or both. Give Jamie the signal. Yes, sir. We're leaving now, Flo. I've got to be back at the shop Monday morning. So do well with the blooming monster, but two side to show itself. It's all a fight, anyhow. Flo, the lake. Aye. Do you see? Oh, it, it's a blooming scot. They'll never believe this in Wormsley Park. He's gone, Flo. I'll move it. Why'd you get here? 
I told you, you wouldn't believe it. The Macmillan treasure. Oh, I'm touched. Yeah, and my friends all hope there will be enough here so they won't be touched for a while. <laughs> so, uh, thank you, Duncan, for uh, saving me the digging. If my Latin is reliable, these shares assure us of handsome dividends from all those people traveling the Northwest Passage to India. Yeah, through 1819. <laughs> There's more in here, Jamie. So, look. Mm. It's a necklace. They are modest but lovely. To be worn by the mistress of Castle Kinross. Hey, you're selling this place to me. As they say in your country, sir. No way. Now, just a minute. Up the Macmillan. It's a happy conclusion for you, Macmillans. And as soon as we prepare the legal case against these two for the murder of the laird, you'll get your just revenge. We ne'er kill the old man. Took his treasure, aye. But we're nae murderers. I suspect they're right, Mr. Ramsey. A murderer would have dealt more harshly with my wife and Charles Enright. There's no real link between the treasure and my uncle's death. I'd like to propose a toast. Michael McMillan was more than a father to me. He... It was a rare privilege to know him. And I've not been able to prove, as I'd hoped, that he was murdered. But I would like to propose a toast to this man whose noble life cannot be diminished by the events of a single day. To the late Laird, whose death, whose suicide, I will not accept, because it's simply unacceptable. To the late Laird. Come on, Bobby, stay down or I'll never get this fly tied. Well, sir, I just thought that since the case is solved that, uh, uh, Miss McTavish has taken me to a secret place she knows where we can get in some good night fishing. Just a second. May I? That's it. May I ask you all, Ramsey, Jamie, Houston, join me in the tower room in about 10 minutes? Come on, bud. Come on. Come on, Come on. Thank you for your patience. I am happy to tell you that sometimes the unacceptable is also the untrue. Uncle Michael did not commit suicide. He was murdered. And in front of a witness. The witness, as my wife was the first to sense, was a dog, Bobby. And he's already testified three times. First, by barking at you, Duncan. <coughs> then at you, Mr. Ramsey. <coughs> then at Charles Enright. <coughs> or so we thought. Actually, he was barking at a fish hook. I'll show you why. Our murderer took a fish hook and line, which is almost invisible, attached it to a trigger of a preloaded gun before Uncle Michael came into the room, wrapped it around the butt of the rifle, out through the window, threw it up to the parapet above. Then he went up there and waited. Uncle Michael walked to the window, probably when he heard the sound of my voice from the driveway. Uncle Michael! Uncle Michael! One yank to pull the trigger. The second yank, much stronger, to pull the gun off its mounting. Bobby got Nick the first time, trying to capture that instrument that killed his master. Good boy. But 
This is all pure speculation. No, the line left marks at the top of the slip. And my wife and I saw the murderer. We did? Uh huh, late that night. He had to wait till dark to make his escape. Mac, why would he come back the following night? He didn't. Remember that first night we saw a man running? Mm -hmm. Then the second night we saw a man running, only faster? Mm -hmm. Which puzzled me, because a man escaping always runs at his own top speed. Which means that there had to be two men, one each night. It was me the second time. Yeah, you were down in the cellar, did you? And the first night, it was the murderer who waited up on that roof until Uncle Michael could walk to the window. But, Mac, how would he know when to pull the trigger if he's up on the roof? Yes, of course. He couldn't see anything from there. Well, you could guess at it, I suppose. Bad luck, Mac. It was a doozy of a theory while it lasted. He's right. No way to know if the laird was in his sight. Right. But what if there were two of them? The murderer up on the roof, and someone out there to signal him when to fire. Where out there? There's no place for the clear view and cover? Yes, there is. The crofter's cottage. Mrs. Gray's place. Well, but it, it's too far to fire. Not too far away to observe. Through mighty powerful binoculars. What was your signal to Houston, Mrs. Gray? Everyone knew that Uncle Michael would never sell this place. But you knew that Jamie would. You had to sell this place to Globe Hotels, didn't you? Living off expenses you'd never earned. Wasn't that it? What were you thinking of, Mrs. Gray, when you stood there and watched the tower, smoked all your cigarettes and waited? Didn't you ever wonder how you could let this con man talk you into killing a laird? Don't answer him, Annie. It's a trick. What was your signal, Mrs. Gray? Did you raise an umbrella? I lowered it. God help me, I lowered it. Everybody stand right there. I'm really very good with this. <laughs> Thank you, Sergeant. You can go fishing now. Thanks for everything, Mac. We're really grateful. You know, it's not going to be the same around here without you. Very, very quiet. The next healing games are not for two years. I think the village will get by. I somehow have the feeling that the monster may appear again. Come on, Bobby. They die hard, monsters. Of course, Bobby goes with the castle, but if you ever get tired of him, San Francisco can always use another good detective. <laughs> we seen him, we did, as plain as ruddy old day. Yeah. The flying Scotty is, according to the new lad hereabouts, gone forth from his castle 